thinking about what kind of book construction suits your concept, sometimes something traditional is the best fit. If your project is about books, it makes sense that you would publish it in the format of a book. Check out this work by New York artist Aaron Kroc. Aaron scans the title pages of books from the New York Public Library, but can you tell what he added to each page? Try pausing this video on a shot of a page to see if you can tell what Aaron added. See this stamp here? And notice that it's on each and every page. The author of this book committed suicide. You can also see that he chose to keep the black borders to give a little bit of a window into how he created the book by Xeroxing title pages of other books. Aaron spent one week at the New York Public Library researching authors who had committed suicide. Aaron was interested in exploring whether there was a link between creativity and despair. Is being a writer dangerous, he wondered? At home, he stamped each title page with the information that the author of this book committed suicide. He stacked the books from largest to smallest. They leaned against the wall like a tired gravestone. Before returning the books, he scanned each of the stamped pages to make this artist's book, a collection organized in the same order as the stack. The book is now the sculpture, flattened, but still holding all the necessary information. This book by Swiss duo Fishley and Weiss has a similar construction. The pages are bound using glue, a method called a perfect binding. Notice how it is entirely text-based with out of order numbers that don't have a clear meaning. Is it just that they want us to know that these examples of life's unanswerable questions have been randomized? Because this entire book is a work of art, it doesn't have to contain works of art. You can create artists' books that are entirely text-based. Conversely, you can also have artists' books that are entirely image-based. Check out Hans Peter Feldman's Voyeur. Notice how the layout of the images changes from page to page, and it is entirely made up of images. These are not Hans Peter Feldman's images, rather ones that he appropriated from elsewhere, like movie stills, ads, pornography, scientific imagery, archival images, found photographs, and more. He carefully constructed a sequence and design that invites the reader to interpret the images as a narrative. Consider also how your reader will experience your book. How will they handle it? This is an example of a perfect bound book, just like the ones we saw previously. However, this is meant to be experienced as a flip book. Called Perfect Imperfect by Lisa Young, flipped one way, the skater lands her jump, and flipped the other way, the skater does not land her jump. Now let's explore some examples that are not constructed like traditional books. Here's another example from Lisa Young called Calendar. During the calendar year of 2001, Lisa took a photograph of the sky each morning. The resulting 365 photographs are positioned into 12 grids. Each grid mimics the layout of the calendar for that respective month. She incorporated the small versions of each month into an accordion fold book where each page represents one month. Notice how the pages are just one piece of paper folded back and forth into an accordion. For another example of an accordion fold, let's see Dianita Sings sent a letter. Dianita has been making small photo journals of her travels, making one copy for herself and one for the friend she made the journey with. This is the first published version of a selection of some of those journals. They are Dianita's own photographs.
arranged one on each page, but each of these mini books is also simply just one long sheet accordion folded. The difference between this and the previous accordion fold that we saw is that this fold is attached to a small piece of cardboard, which serves as a book jacket. It's simply glued to the cardboard and then accordion folded to create a small book. Consider whether your artist's book might come in some sort of a case with multiple parts. Let's explore another example of an artist's book with multiple parts, Dark Archives by Andre Bradley. Here's the publisher's description. Dark Archives by artist Andre Bradley is a provocative exploration of one black man's memories of childhood. An autobiography in fragments, Dark Archives interweaves Bradley's writing and photographs with pictures from his family archive. Part story, part lyrical investigation, Dark Archives aims to upset the linguistic and visual constrictions placed on black males. Bradley powerfully combines image and text in this deeply moving meditation on narrative agency, on the family as archive, on being a young black man, and on being Andre Bradley. Some of these inserts are a bifold, sheets of paper folded in half and simply stapled at the seam. Notice the contrast between these photographs and the ones on the opposite side. What do you think this signifies? Now let's look at a construction often called French Doors. This is Standing Strong by Josue Rivas and it is another great example of the narrative power of artist books. The pages are bound on the outsides so that you can turn two pages at once. Notice how the title page matches up with a poem to introduce. Each chapter is introduced with an illustration. And then you see Josue's photographs. The photographer spent seven months at Standing Rock, North Dakota during the protests, but he wanted to focus on the spirit of the camps rather than the protests and the clash with police. He says, Standing Strong is an offering with four chapters. Each chapter is structured with a different intention, but ultimately they are doors to open into the spirit of healing and reconciliation amongst all people. Consider the poignancy of having a book representing opening doors to the spirit of healing, and the construction is a French doors construction. Also examples of artists' books which are not bound at all. This is a Pesos New Tarot. Tony Pesos is a professor at Lesley University, and he created this tarot deck using all of his own paintings. Working with a local company on the printing, he paired each of his images with the traditional tarot text. You can see that you can really get creative with what you call a book. Another example of a book inside of a case, Cliff Village by Jill Tim, is a great example of unique materials. Cliff Village is a photographic portrait of a small remote ancient cliff dwelling in New Mexico. The cover is made of clay and includes an embedded arrowhead. Consider size as an option as well. This is a very small example compared with Josue Riva Standing Strong, which we saw previously. That book took up a lot of space, which is very meaningful when you consider how important it is for indigenous populations to physically take up space. Elizabeth Duffy was fascinated with the security printing on security envelopes. 
She designed her own security patterns and created a book that exposes the data protection patterning of these envelopes. She also incorporates translucent panels and a folding pouch in the back.